you very much for sitting down with me. Great to be here. One of the controversies here in the United States is the debate over whether to send more um, uh, aid to Ukraine. What are your thoughts about Ukraine? Well, we cannot let Russia win. It would be an absolute disaster if Putin succeeds. He is in league with Hamas. We saw Hamas visit Moscow. He's in league with China as well. And if Putin succeeded in Ukraine, first of all, I don't think he'd stop there. I think we'd see the Baltic states under threat. I think we'd see Poland under threat. But also, what lesson would President Xi take from that? He is most likely invade Taiwan and go further in the Asia Pacific. So we need to do all we can to help Ukraine. And what I think it means is sending things like long range weapons and aeroplanes like the F-16s and being clear that we want to push, we want to help the Ukrainians push Russia out of Ukraine. I think the war aims need to be a lot clearer and we need to have a clear objective as the West. I also think that Europe needs to pay more of its share. You know, there hasn't been enough investment in NATO and we need to make sure we are able to defend ourselves. It's almost though you wouldn't go as far as to say boots on the ground from the UK in Ukraine, would you? No. Okay. No, well, because, but I fear it will get to that stage if Putin succeeds in Ukraine. That is the problem we face. We know what's happened before when dictators have been appeased, that they don't just stop. They carry on with their expansionary ambitions. So my real fear is unless we do enough to stop Putin now, he will continue. And he is being aided and abetted by the Chinese. You know, it's in China's interest for Putin to succeed. I'm not in favor of sending American boots on the ground or anybody out to Ukraine. I don't mean to suggest that. But at what point does it become that? Because Putin, we're on a two-year anniversary. Putin's not stopping. Um, at what point, where, where do you see this going? The point is, at present, Ukraine do not have all the tools they need to win. And what they really need are long-range weapons and aeroplanes. You don't think that would then And, and by the way, the U.S. has some of these resources being mothballed at the moment. So there's an opportunity to send resources to Ukraine that simply aren't being used by the US. And that is what I would like to see happen. It's so interesting, That's a, you know, there's a debate even within the Republican Party, which is the conservative party here in the United States. Some conservatives do want to help U Ukraine and want to, want to send those. And President Biden, I think, wants to be more ag aggressive in helping Ukraine. Yet there are other members of the Republican Party who say, look, you know, America first, let's take care of our own people first. Well, what, what I've heard is that people want specifics they want to know what it will take to win and to help Ukraine win. I want to see Americans using resources that they have already that are mothballed and sending those resources to Ukraine that will actually work to win. And that is what the administration here needs to spell out. They need to spell out what the war aims are and how they're going to help Ukraine win. And I don't think that has been clear enough. Right. Obviously, the United States is the last superpower is very important to the world. And you even mentioned um, you know, your comments about the United States vis-a-vis -vis the UK. Tell me about the presidential election here this year and your thoughts, how that, you know, how that plays out and how it impacts your country. Well, I want to see Republicans back in the White House. I think there's no doubt that the free world was safer when we had a Republican president than it is now. If you look at what's happened on the Afghanistan withdrawal, what's happened with the war in Ukraine, the increasingly emboldened Iran, uh, who are now in danger of acquiring nuclear capability. I believe it would be safer and the world would feel safer if we had a Republican back in the White House. President Trump is more muscular in terms of, I think, that, you know, historically than, than President Biden. Um, but President Trump has made comments, which he was well, about NATO, about funding NATO. He's, he's not happy that some countries are not paying what they've committed to. Um, and he's even made statements to suggest that he might not protect them if, as part of NATO. Um, you want to protect uh, against Putin. How, how do you reconcile some countries not paying what they committed to NATO, our need to protect these countries, and the dispute over all this? We were hugely complacent after the end of the Cold War. We didn't invest enough in defense. We thought there was a peace dividend. It was spent on European welfare states, and that is a huge problem, because now we are racing to catch up on our military capability.